This is Twit. We've got a new segment in the show, and that's called Reviewing Stuff Rob Convinced Jonathan to Buy. And we're going to start with the Crow View Note. This laptop. There, let me get in the picture with it. It's kind of big. Uh, this laptop-sized thing. It's not exactly a laptop with a Raspberry Pi 5 hanging off the side of it. And uh, I figured I would I would tell you guys about it. It has indeed come in. And there are a couple of things I really, really like about it. And then there are a couple of things that really sort of irritate me. And uh, And then one more thing that I just, I hope that they fix at some point in the future. Um, so it is it is essentially a keyboard, a monitor, and a battery. So inside it is you know keyboard, touchpad. It, it is all the guts of like a laptop, but without the motherboard. And then you have the motherboard hanging out the side of it in the form of the Raspberry Pi. Uh, and then they also send along the little adapter board. That's what you see between the Pi and the device. Uh, and then I've got one of the NVMe carrier boards on top there. Um, because who wants to use an SD card? Not me. There are a couple of things that's cool about it. I didn't realize this at first. It does have a built-in battery, so it does work as a laptop. So I'll hit the power button here, and you might be able to see lights come on, green light on the Pi. And it's probably not going to show up real well on my camera here, but it is booting. And uh, there is a button you can press to get the, uh, um, the, the battery life, how much battery life is remaining. Yeah, my camera is... Oh, there we go. There, you should be able to see part of that. I hold it just right. And so that's the Raspberry Pi booting up. And it's ready to go. I don't have a GUI on this particular Pi. Um, it's cool. I, I really I really dig it. I really like having the uh, sort of the extra screen here and the fact that the Raspberry Pi hangs off the side of it. I, I like it. For a lot of things, it's going to be really cool. Um, I already have some kind of thoughts about what I'm going to do with it. I'm plotting. I have plans. Um, uh, there is one thing in particular that was obviously not thought through very well, and that is that uh, when it ships, it comes with uh, a couple of laser-cut acrylic pieces that sort of sandwich in with that carrier board. And so it, it goes under it like this, and the idea is that you know, you've know got your carrier board here and the pie sits here. Uh, if you have the official Raspberry Pi cooler... That cooler has pegs that go through the bottom of the pie to hold it on, and the pegs don't fit when this thing is on there. That that annoys me. That that's not okay. <laughs> that was that was not that was not the thing I wanted to find. Um, thankfully, take a screwdriver, take it off. It works just fine without it. Um, the other thing that that is just a little bit of a problem is. You've got a Raspberry Pi hanging off of the side of your uh, of your computer. Uh, as Loquacious says, it is sort of Mad Max esque. It, it's it's a little. It looks cobbled together, um, and so the only thing that's holding that on there is on one side it's a USB A, a USB C, and an HDMI, and on the other side it's two is it mini or micro HDMI and a single USB C. I guess I guess there's also the USB to USB bridge board up here. Um, but still, like it feels to me, that might be a little fragile in the long term. Um, but it doesn't look good in a kid household. I would not want my five-year-old or my three-year-old to try to use this. Correct, or even be around, or so. I mean, right? Um, it's it's like it needs it, it's like it needed just a little bit more work on the the actual like fitting together. On the other hand, the way that it's put together does make it very very flexible. And I don't mean that like in a physical sense, like it's it's flexible. No, that's not good. But it's flexible in that like you could just you can plug any device in because it's got an HDMI port and USB port and it'll spit power out. Um, so that part is good. Uh, the feel, the fit and the finish is not bad. The keyboard is not the greatest keyboard, but it's not terrible either. It works. It's, you know, it's it's serviceable. So you plug a good keyboard into the uh, Raspberry Pi, right? At that point, you would just use a portable monitor as well instead of this thing, right? Like, so you could do that, but you're sort of beginning to defeat the point of it. Um, there is one more thing that, like, I just now realized that's on here that is really cool, and that is it does have a power switch on this little adapter board between the two. 
there's a power switch to be able to turn things off all the way. Um, so that is cool. Um, and then, of course, you can shut things down, power it off, and save your battery life. Um, so overall, I really like it. I am legitimately going to use this. Uh, I've got a I got to figure out a way to give this to give the Pi itself a little bit of support rather than it just hanging out beside it because it's not great. Um, and I will tell you what I think they need to do for their next version. I don't understand why they did not do this yet. There's a good reason why they did not do it yet, but it makes so much sense for the next one. And that is when the Pi CM5 finally comes out here, I think in just another month or two, it's coming soon. Like we've already seen. I've already seen official leaks about it. Um, when the Pi CM5 comes out, rather than hanging the Pi off the side, they just need to make a cutout here. Put the Pi CM5 right there. And then ideally have another cutout to be able to put an NVMe drive in there. And uh, there you go. That would be the way to do it. Then you have a full-on laptop that is powered by a Raspberry Pi CM5 that theoretically, maybe when the CM6 comes along, maybe it'll just fit and just work. I don't know. Um, so I would love for Elecro to do that with the CrowView Note 2. And if they won't do it, then um, maybe Framework can come along. Or even even somebody else can partner with Framework and make a, uh, a board for Framework laptops that you can just slot a CM5 into. Do we see a partnership between uh, Ras? Raspberry Pi and framework, maybe in the future. I would not be against that. Oh, that's the sort of thing I could imagine people doing. I would, I would like to see it. I think it'd be really cool. Um, I would, I would love to have. I'm excited about having this, right? Like the ability to have a Raspberry Pi five in a notebook factor. Um, I just would love for it to not have the entire Raspberry Pi five hanging off the side. <laughs> like oh, the old time Nick cards, uh, yeah use with laptops yes. yeah when you said when you said uh if it was underneath kind of inside there i immediately thought of framework i was like that sounds mm -hmm. very framework-esque yeah it does it sounds a lot like something they would do uh but i could i could see elcro doing it too like it's so close what they have here is is so close to it um yeah it, it, no, it's, i've it's, only got it's one cool. question can it run blender i think so i'm pretty sure the raspberry pi 5 can Oh, well, I mean, you can run Blender on this display because, like I said, it's got an HDMI port on it, so you can run anything you want to on that. Just make sure you got a lot of free time. <laughs> yeah. Hey, it's Leo Laporte. I hope you've enjoyed this little clip from our programming at twit.tv. For more, visit our website, twit.tv, or subscribe in your favorite podcast client. There's also a link somewhere down there. <laughs>